Welcome back. Okay, so I talk about breakthrough candidates often during the summer. Usually once a summer, I'll talk about breakthrough candidates, but it's normally 10 or 11 players, right? We're like, all right, this guy who has played, and that's the key, has to be a player that at least got into some games. Now, for this list, uh, the, the smallest number of games a player has played this past season to get on this list, eight. There are players who played eight games. So not every team has a guy who's played a lot of games that I think is going to break through and see that increase in their offensive numbers. But I gave myself a challenge. Can I do it with all 32 teams? And I have. So uh, I'll go through this. You guys can let me know your picks. There's not really a wrong answer here. So let me know why I'm wrong in the comment section below. All right, starting off with the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, for the Oilers, um, this is a player who I know has some people that aren't sold on him. But for Broberg, he's young. With defensemen, remember, uh, when they're young, don't write them off. I'm not writing off Broberg. 46 games, one goal, seven assists, eight points. In the event of an injury, he should see increased ice time. We know every defense goes through injuries. And I, I'd like to see Broberg break through. Yep, yep. A lot of the guys on this board are ones that I'd like to see the numbers get better. And so maybe that's the case for Broberg this season. Uh, good defenseman again, young, solid defenseman. Drafted relatively early, so we'll see what we'll see what he's able to do this season. Uh, for San Jose, one of those players who got into eight games this year, Eklund. So Eklund, probably the best of the young players who are fighting for jobs this season. Will Smith's probably going to be the guy long term, but Eklund has a real opportunity here. San Jose needs goals, they need a young player, they need some speed and some energy. And so Eklund could very well fill that role. And I think he still qualifies as a rookie this coming season as well. And so, yeah, uh, he has a shot, maybe at a Calder while we're at it. But uh, San Jose, definitely a team that, you know, needs to show their fans, hey, the future, future's in good hands. Um, so we get to Seattle and we've got the other player who played eight games this year and that's Shane Wright. Uh, Shane Wright in eight games at the NHL level, one goal, one assist, two points. So it was a rough year for Shane Wright. We talked about it a lot, but in the end, he had a good run with Coachella Valley in the playoffs. He didn't get a ton of points in those playoffs, but he was playing well. He was generating passes and offense, the zone entries, all that stuff people love about him. Uh, when he's on his game. And so Wright will likely get an opportunity to play in Seattle. Uh, could very well find himself playing a good amount of time. And again, if it does take him another year, I wouldn't be entirely surprised. But optimist here. Optimist. And, and I do think that while his draft stock dropped, he ended up going to Seattle later than anybody expected going into that draft. I think there's too much made so far in, in a lack of success at the NHL level considering he's still a teenager. So that's that's the thing to keep in mind with him too. Which brings me to Calgary. Now Calgary was tougher to find a young player who I felt like was going to break through and had played games this past season. So Dewar, 27 games, 7 goals, 4 assists, 11 points. Now you take those 7 goals and, and over 27 games, you figure that out over a full season, that pro rates out to about 20 goals. That's not bad. Uh, Dewar also a very hard-working player. So if Adam Huska um, wants to put his stamp on the team, maybe Dewar gets more time. And considering the players that may very well be on their way out of town and, you know, whatever's going to happen with Calgary, maybe there'll be opportunity for Dewar to move up the lineup as a response, right? Uh, one thing I will say for the Calgary Flames and the departed GM of Brad Tree Living, he did a pretty good job of having players on the Calgary Flames that were hard workers. Um, maybe not the greatest finishers, but pretty hard workers in Calgary. So uh, Dewar's the latest example of that as well. Uh, which brings me to Vegas. Uh, for Las Vegas, uh, recently re-signed uh, free agent, as in restrict restricted free agent. He didn't actually go to market. But 18 games for Dorofiev, 7 goals, 2 assists, 9 points. So Vegas, the team that's coming off of a cup win. There might be an opportunity for a youngster to move up the lineup a little bit as a result of some of the moves made in the offseason. Maybe Dorofeyev ends up stealing a spot, right? So uh, I like Dorofeyev a lot. I like what he brings to the team. And again, good young player. And if you prorate pro that seven goals over 18 games out, that's a pretty good season too. That's around 30 goals, right? I'm not saying it's going to work that way. It usually doesn't. But 
impressive. Small sample size, but impressive. Uh, for the LA Kings, and I believe I had him on last year's list as well, but I will say this. Quentin Byfield, uh, this past season, played 53 games, had three goals, 19 assists, 22 points. Quentin Byfield played really well the second half of the season, especially towards the end of the season as well. He did not get the goals. He did not generate the points, but the, the effort was there. And it was it was something to watch. You know, he would set up a play, and then he'd be the third assist. Well, they don't give out three assists, so he didn't get on the score sheet. But I, I kept thinking, you know, he's playing really well. He's going. It's going to happen. So I do believe that Byfield, we see the numbers jump this year. Now, whether that's forty five points, fifty points, maybe sixty, who knows? I, it's probably going to depend on a really good start for Byfield. But I do like the player, and yet yeah, we'll see how it all works out uh, for Vancouver. Now, honorable mention to Hoaglander, because I was on the fence as to who I was going to put on the board. Uh, I do think Hoaglander does end up playing on the team, and maybe he bumps Pod Colson out. Maybe. But Pod Colson's the one I'm putting on the board. 39 games this past season, 4 goals, 3 assists, 7 points. Uh, Pod Colson had a rough year, but he's not the only Canuck that had a rough year. So, a first full year under Rick Tockett, him talking about teaching fundamentals and just starting with the basics and moving along. That's got to benefit a young player like Pod Colson. So I do have my fingers crossed that he gets into maybe the 15 goal range. The the talent is there, and that's the thing with hockey players. The talent's there to get you to the NHL. It's the work, it's evolving your game that keeps you in the NHL. So if Pod Colson can can do that work and evolve his game, he may very well be one of the sixth round. If not, uh, so we'll see. Uh, then we get to Anaheim. Now this is where it's kind of weird because with Anaheim, I'm I'm going with one that um, really may be a little bit of a surprise. I'm setting this up because Trevor Zegers. Why would I have Zegers on the board? That's crazy. Zegers had 23 goals this year. 23. I I don't understand how he's under 30, other than the rest of the team around him isn't very good. As Anaheim gets better, Zegers' numbers are going to get much better. So even though he was the number one scorer in Anaheim, and people may very well use that one and say, well, one of these things are not like the other, and that would be accurate, but I think Zegers can be a 40-goal scorer. I think he can hit 90 points, and I think it could happen sooner than later. They've changed their coach. Clearly, they're trying to start building things up a bit. Look for Zegers' numbers go up. It's that 23 goals that, to me, seems far too low. He has a ton of talent. Kind of reminds me of Svechnikov in Carolina that way. But uh, while Svechnikov continues to produce totals that just don't seem to match his skill level, uh, Zegers has got to pick it up. Uh, for Florida, for Florida, I went with Lindell. Or, you know, the second Barkov. Uh, for Lindell this year, he played 73 games, 12 goals, 21 assists, 33 points. He's going to keep getting better. He should be at the 20 goal level this year. I, I really think that Lundell has all the talent to do it. Um, his two way play is very, very good. Uh, maybe maybe the fact that Barkov's there means Barkov gets that chance to prove himself a lot, and, and Lundell's got to wait his turn. Maybe that's part of it. But yeah, I, I think the numbers are going to get better for Lundell this year. Uh, Boston was tough. Boston was a tough one because they don't have a lot of young players. So I'm going with Jacob Lauko. Uh, 23 games this past season, 4 goals, 3 assists, 7 points. I'm going with Lauko for a simple reason. Work. He works for it. Uh, he he honestly impressed me this past season. I thought it was a really strong performance on his behalf. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him on the fourth line. I wouldn't be surprised to see him getting third line minutes at some point this year as well. I've talked about how Boston's lost some depth up front. In the offseason, I mean, no Bergeron, no Krejci. They had to trade Hall. There's no Felino. There's room for a guy like Lauko to jump in. While other players have been signed to fill in some of the gaps, uh, Lauko stepping in and, and showing what he can do would be huge. And again, I think he's capable of more points. Uh, for Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay is always tough, isn't it? So I'm going with... I'm going with Kepke. So I was looking through their through their players again who played this past season. And I was like, why not Kepke? Every year we see a guy come in that seems to be out of nowhere, whether it was Colton, whether it was Perbix. 
So yeah, Kepke, just the one goal in 17 games. Don't let that fool you. There's plenty of players who've come in and initially they don't produce for Tampa. And then all of a sudden, you have Carter Verhage in Florida. So uh, because when Verhage came up initially, there wasn't a lot there. Uh, and so I, I think Kepke could very well be the next guy. I would not be entirely surprised. At the, very, at the very least, if he gets five points in 20 games, then I'm right. Because he only had one point in 17 games this year. So... It seems like a safe bet, but again, with Tampa Bay, a lot of older players, and so not a lot of young, top, top-tier top talent because they've been trading that off in order to stay in contention for Stanley Cups, which when you win a couple back-to-back -back, makes it feel a lot better. Uh, Buffalo. So, Owen Power. Owen Power had a great year. He really did. But I think we've just seen the, the very tip of what he can do the the tip of the iceberg right 79 games four goals 31 assists 35 points powers fantastic uh such a smart player and i would expect his totals to jump to i would say at least 50 points and i think he could be double digits and goals power is very very good and yeah i i really don't have anything negative to say with power and again this some of these might seem like kind of cop-outs people but i just i wanted to talk about this today and i figured fire up the camera and talk about it stop thinking about it just talk about it all right montreal so slavkovsky had a season that was uh, marred by injury and he had some inconsistent play before that so 39 games this past season, four goals, six assists, 10 points. Not setting the world on fire. I think this coming season, things get much better for him. Uh, Slavkovsky has the talent. I, I thought he was playing better than what I saw a lot of the media reporting. Like, I'm not saying he was playing great, but I kept seeing these things in media about all his struggles. And I was like, well, he got opportunities in that game. And there were some opportunities here. It's just not going his way. So that's, that's key. And I, I think his... His goal scoring and his point production will absolutely go up this year. It's going to depend on being healthy, though. That's big. Uh, for Ottawa. Uh, for Ottawa, I think Sens fans are going to agree with me in this one. I'm going with Ridley Gregg, who played 20 games, 2 goals, 7 assists, 9 points. Smart player, Ridley Gregg. Uh, they they brought him in at the right time. He's He fits right in. Uh, plays like a veteran. I think he's a really solid, smart player. And... For an Ottawa team that that needs that, right? You just lost to Brinkett uh, in that trade. Having Greg come up and produce on top of maybe Norris being able to have that bounce back season being healthy, uh, that could make up quite a bit for the loss of Brinkett. Ottawa fans may not even notice. Uh, Toronto. Toronto, I, I went out on a, on a limb a little bit here. Toronto doesn't have a ton of young players either. I'd love to put Nick Robertson up here, but with his injury history... I just can't. So I went with Tim Timothy Lilligren in six, 67 games, 6 goals, 12 assists, 18 points. I still think the trading of Sandine was a mistake. I am still of the mind that trading Sandine was a mistake. Uh, but Lilligren, if given that opportunity, and the advanced stats would tell you he deserves that opportunity, uh, I think Lilligren can be a pretty solid defenseman for them. So I've got Lilligren up there for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, I would totally have put Nick Robertson but the amount of injuries he's had over the last couple of years and time missed, I, I just don't know. I don't know. Uh, Detroit. I went with a favorite of mine. Soderblom. Uh, so for Soderblom, he played 21 games this past season, five goals, three assists, eight points. As big as he is and as dominant as he can be physically, clearly he needed some more work. So he's had that at the minors level. Uh, should be ready, I would think, to come up and play at the NHL level and maybe get some goals standing in front of the net. He's, uh, I think, nine foot three. Anyways, uh, Sauter, he's not that big, but it, it feels like it when you're watching on TV. It's men versus boys, and he's young, so it just makes it weirder. But yeah, the 21 games, I think he'll at least double that this year, and the eight points, more than double it. So, right? That's really going out on a limb. Did he just predict 42 games for him at about 20 points? Ooh, wow, big breakthrough. Anyway, Soderblom, uh, yeah, I would think his his game's just going to get better. Uh, Winnipeg, so another one uh, derailed by injuries. But I think Cole Perfetti has all of the tools to become a star player in the NHL. And much like some of the others on the board, with movement that's happened and movement that's likely still going to happen with Winnipeg, 
you may see an opportunity for Perfetti to play more minutes than he would have in previous seasons. And, and maybe he gets that chance to show what he can do as a top forward. So Cole Perfetti, again, just the 51 games due to injury this past season, but he has the talent. I've been really impressed by him. And so maybe this is a big year for him. Brings us to Arizona. Arizona, Aaron Hayden. Now, Hayden, 82 games this past season, 19 goals, 24 assists, 43 points. So if you look at that and you say, well, those are pretty good totals. Why would you have them on your breakthrough list? Because by the end of the year, you had Hayden playing on a line with Schmaltz and Keller. It was one of the best lines in the National Hockey League. Absolutely ridiculous, the synergy those three guys had. So if they pick up where they left off to start this season, uh, Arizona's going to score themselves some goals. And Barrett Hayden's going to get himself some points. I would say 60, maybe 65 absolutely possible and i think keller uh this year could become the first coyote to ever reach 100 points but uh, yeah hayden will be the beneficiary if that happens because it feels like him between schmaltz and keller is just it just works and again shows that having patience with your prospects works too because hayden there's other teams that might have given up on him before now but uh, arizona gives him every opportunity minnesota uh so for minnesota I've had this name on the board before. I feel bad for Marco Rossi. Uh, he lost a year in his development. Uh, this year, he was just lost. 19 games, just the one assist. A really rough year. I'm So again, I'm hoping that Rossi has that turnaround and is able to play regular shift with Minnesota, get some goals, and really get it going. His confidence, it felt like took a hit during this season, and it just it just kept going in the wrong direction for him. So I, I'm using the optimism, like I mentioned with Broberg and a couple of others, with Rossi and hoping that he turns it around this year. Uh, Nashville. So with Nashville getting rid of Duchesne and, and Johansson, it may open things up for Tomasino, who I think the plan was to play him a bunch anyways. Uh, he only played 13, 31 games this year, had five goals, 13 assists, 18 points. Tomasino's a talented player. And having a year like that where, you know, he's straddling the AHL and playing in the NHL, um, it, it might take him off the radar for some, but I like Tomasino. I think he's he's a good player. And I know people are going to be like, hey, he likes everybody. Not everybody. No, when I do videos, I do talk about players I like. It does not mean I like everybody. Um, I've talked about meetups. Meetups, all, I let people know who I may not like um because there's no camera on me but yeah Tomasino is not one that you'd ever hear me say anything negative with um and again Nashville should be looking for some young guys coming in clearly Barry Trotz wanting to have some sort of a retool here and that may benefit Tomasino uh for Colorado so this one's going to seem odd but Bowen Byram has had so many injury issues so if he can have a season without injury I think this year's totals that he had of 42 games, 10 goals, 14 assists, 24 points, he can blast those out of the water. Uh, Byram's a, a, just an excellent defenseman. He gets overshadowed because there's that McCarr kid that's pretty good. And it's a really solid defense in Colorado, which I think means that maybe there's some who would take Byram a little more lightly than they should. Uh, Byram, in his own right, could be a star defenseman in the NHL. Maybe this is the year it happens again. He needs to play more than half the schedule. He needs to stay healthy, and that, that's been an issue. Uh, St. Louis. So for St. Louis, going with a guy who played roughly half the season, Jake Neighbors. So Jake Neighbors played 43 games this year, 6 goals, 4 assists, 10 points. Solid, hardworking forward. St. Louis as well, a team that's seemingly going through a, a retool of its own here. Might, uh, might provide an opportunity for neighbors to play more minutes than he did this past season. And again, uh, physical presence, sure. Bit of an agitator, absolutely. Does he have the talent? I would say that he does. So the six goals in 43 games, he shouldn't have any problem with scoring, I would think, at a higher rate than that this coming season. Uh, for Chicago. Um, so for Chicago, I'm going with Lucas Reichel. Uh, there's going to be opportunity, obviously, in Chicago. In 23 games with the Hawks this past season, 7 goals, 8 assists, 15 points. Reichel, 
the talents there. Uh, that showed with him coming up late in the season, and yeah, he played quite well. So for Chicago, a team that probably gets more points this coming season than they had last season, uh, Reichel may very well be a big part of that. So with the departures of guys like Taves and Kane, uh, there's opportunity for new guys, and Reichel may very well be the guy. Uh, for Dallas... Uh, for Dallas, I went with, and this is interesting too, because he was in the running for Rookie of the Year, but I went with Wyatt Johnston. So again, ridiculous. This isn't the same. Uh, 82 games, 24 goals, 17 assists, 41 points. I think 41 points is low. Uh, 24 goals, it might be around there again, but I could see the assists coming up. I could see the points coming up. I could see him more in the 28 goals, 60 points category next season. So I think with Johnston, the talent is there. The goal scoring's clearly there. And there was definitely rumbles about, well, shouldn't he be Rookie of the Year instead of Beneers? My answer to that is no. But, yeah, he's absolutely an excellent uh, player. And he could end up being a better player overall than Beneers over their career. We're still starting out with these guys. Uh, Pittsburgh. So with Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh was tough because they've been trading away young players forever. Penns fans know this. So I thought about Sam Poulin, and I thought, I, I don't know. So I, I'm going out on a limb with this one. Ty Smith. So acquired for John Marino. Only played nine games this past season with Pittsburgh. He recorded a goal and three assists. If Smith's going to make it as an NHLer, this might be his last chance to really be a regular, right? Uh, and not get labeled as a call-up, a number seven defenseman. So... Uh, again, this is me kind of rooting for the player that, you know, Smith. I thought about P.O. Joseph, too, but looking at the totals for Joseph, I don't know how much upside there is offensively with Joseph. I think he's going to get better as a defenseman, sure, but I think the, the points production will probably stay relatively the same. Smith should play more than nine games this year, I would think, but we'll find out how, how wrong this ends up being at a later date. Uh, the New York Rangers. So I know Lafreniere ended up on my board last year. I think Lafreniere had a good season. I also think Kako, pretty good player. The thing with Kako is, so 82 games, 18 goals, 22 assists, 40 points. We're not seeing the increase in offense from Kako that was expected. I think there's still this year, and I think this might be it. So if Kako gets off to a slow start, if he's not producing very well, we may see Kako move on uh, to another location. Maybe another team picks him up and he's able to pick it up there, but... I do think he has all the skill. That kid line shows how much skill Lafreniere and Kako have. I just wanted to put Kako on the board uh, instead of Lafreniere. Because, again, I, I feel like I talk about Lafreniere a lot. I think he's an underrated player. Uh, for the Islanders, one of my favorites. People will know this. Uh, Wallstrom dealing with injury this past season. Uh, he's on a very team-friendly contract. In 35 games, he had 7 goals, 9 assists, 16 points. Goal scoring is a challenge in New York. Uh, the Islanders, not really a, a goal scoring team, as Bo Horvat found out. The style of play that they use is completely different than what Horvat had in Vancouver. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Horvat in the 20 to 25 goal range. Uh, but Wallstrom should be in that 20 to 25 goal range. He should be there every year. And I think there's enough offensive upside. He could be higher than that. Uh, Carolina. So with Carolina. I, I feel like Jarvis should have more points than this. I'm kind of surprised at how few points Jarvis had this year. Uh, 14 goals, 25 assists, 39 points in 82 games. Yeah, he's got more talent than that. I think I think Jarvis uh, can can hit the, the, the rocket straight up. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Seth Jarvis, I think, is an excellent player. I'm trying not to say Doug. I'm trying really hard not to say Doug Jarvis because Doug Jarvis isn't playing anymore. But I, I do think that Seth Jarvis is a solid young player. And 50 to 60 points. Yeah, that's 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 absolutely within the realm of possibility. Washington. Uh, so for Washington. Now there is others others I was considering. But I'm gonna go with Protus. Protus is an absolute beast. Parks himself in front of the net at six foot six. Could be a very dangerous player. Uh, Protus, I think, is capable of taking that next step. I think with what Hershey did winning the stand, win, almost said Stanley Cup, Calder Cup, uh, I think that somebody who could get a boost coming out of that is Protus. So I threw him on the board. Although I thought about Iorio too. 
Uh, Iorio was very good during that playoff run as well. Only got into a few games with Washington this past season. Maybe it's his time. Uh, for New Jersey, I'm going with somebody who's been written off as a bust as well. Maybe I'm wrong. Sure. Uh, Holtz, 19 games, 3 goals, 1 assist, 4 points. There's a spot for Holtz in that lineup. There absolutely is. The New Jersey Devils, a very talented team that's going to score a ton of goals. Holtz could be a beneficiary. He should be a 20-goal scorer in the NHL. When he was drafted, there was a lot of talk about his hands and how, how much of a sniper he was going to be. Now's the time. So I'm wearing New Jersey because they had their breakthrough this past regular season. So that's why I'm wearing New Jersey. But yeah, Holtz. Holtz, I think, can be the guy. Uh, Columbus. For Columbus, I am going with... Obviously, a young player, Kent Johnson. Uh, Kent Johnson this year played 79 games, 16 goals, 24 assists, 40 points. Johnson, honestly, I think he has the potential and the talent to almost double that. Uh, if Columbus, if things fall their way this year, and if they, they get off to a good, strong start, which I talk about because, really, the start tells you who's going to be in the playoffs more often than not. But uh, Johnson, I think, has the talent. Um, plays like a veteran. He, he doesn't make a lot of the mistakes young players make. And so I think that bodes well for him as well. I think he, he should be in the 60-point range. I'd say 60-point range this year. Got to be 60-point range. And finally, last but not least, the Philadelphia Flyers. With Philadelphia, a player who just signed an extension for a couple years, Cam York. Uh, York played 54 games for Philadelphia. Two goals, 18 assists, 20 points. Uh, with the defense being in flux, as it is with Provorov being traded, I think there's a spot there for Cam York to jump in and at least double his production. Um, York, very, very impressive right out of the gate, and I think that's part of what allows them to trade Provorov, plus the fact that they're in a rebuild. But uh, yeah, I like York's game a lot. So there you go. I did not put goalies on the board. Uh, goalies, I feel like, are a different conversation. But let me know your thoughts regarding this conversation and which players you think are ready for a breakthrough season this year in the National Hockey League. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.